bothered me quite a bit for a while. And I was, I couldn't get the ball into left field. I was a pull hitter, like you say. And then that defense got there, and I wasn't prepared for it as quickly as they put that defense against me. And I had a hard time going out that way. But I was close to the plate at that time, and I could pull everything. Then they're pitching me inside, and I'm trying to, and I'm losing a lot of hits over here because too many people are out there to feel the ball. Now I'm trying to go to left field, and I'm trying to do it this way, with the bat that way, you know? And all I had to do is get away from the plate and hit the ball horizontal. See? And it was easier for me to do it. Not that I hit the ball that strongly, but I could hit it to shortstop, and it was a base hit every time. That broke their hearts a little bit, and they started opening up a little bit, and it made it a little easier. Yes? Do you remember when you hit that home run? There's like a blooper? Yeah, oh yeah, the blooper pitch. Yeah, I hit a home run off the blooper pitch. And this pitcher had had pretty good success with that pitch all year. It's hard to throw a ball, you know, like that, a lot of motion, and lob it in for a strike. But he had that ability. And nobody had hit a home run. And that day, why well, all the conditions were favorable and everything, and I, I hit a home run against him. Yes. Who was over here? Yes, right here, buddy. Do you believe in pushing the ball? You know what? It's a good question. Because I do believe it, that the swing is pretty near basically a push swing. Now watch, watch, watch the way I would hit. Now I keep my bat kind of low, right here. Now, you think in terms of a swing is that, right? Yeah. But look, look at my hands that way. Going out and around. Now watch this. Here's the way my swing was. Here's my hands. I cock. Now watch my hands. Boom right across, right? Isn't it? Here it is. Ah, boom, right there. I put in there, push right through, don't I? Now, by cocking and pulling, my hands don't go that way, do they? Huh? That's a big arc. Much more critical, much longer than that short, quick push. And really, it is a push. It really is a push. Go ahead, the guy in the black. What's your, name? What's your name? What's your name? Yeah. My batting stance, I'm a right, I have my left foot farther up than my right foot. Is there anything wrong with that? Because I find I have more power that way. Well, and there's nothing wrong with it? No. Uh, you probably stand a little farther away the plate then, too. Yeah. Okay. Nothing wrong with that at all. Now, he says that he's, he has a closed position. Now, if I'm right on the plate and I have a closed position, Boy, I have a long ways to go from here, where my hands are, to here to hit an inside pitch. That's a long stroke, right? Long stroke. Now, I'm hitting the ball way out here in front, right? For an inside pitch. Now, suppose you're having trouble hitting. Now, you're having trouble hitting because, boom, the fastball is fast and the, the curveball fools you, partly because you have to get committed, you've committed yourself or have to commit yourself so early because you've got to hit the ball so far in front. Now look, here are you. Here are you. This is you. Same bat, same ball, same reflexes, same eyes. But you're having trouble hitting this way. Now look what you can do. You can move away from the plate. Now there's a length of stroke which I'm giving you here. Right here, right there. See my hand from this one. Right there. Now, you're having trouble. So look, you back away from the plate. Now you say, well, what about the outside pitch? I have to hit it here. Now, that would shorten your length of stroke, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? There's your real length of stroke. Now, all you have to do is turn, right? Now, you're hitting the ball a foot and a half further back, right? You've got the same amount of stroke. The only thing you're, your only thing that you're con uh, uh, losing or conceding is pulling the ball. You've got the same amount of stroke. You've got the same power, except you're going to start hitting the ball through the middle more and you've got more time, you should hit more balls consistently good that way. Now, if you still can hit the ball and pull it and hit for an average, go ahead and do it. You're going to hit with a little more. You're, going to, you're not going to hit with more power, but you're going, to, you're going to benefit from your power. A little more pulling the ball because you're not hitting to the biggest part of the ballpark, are you? But don't think in terms of pulling the ball. Here I was. I was a pull hitter. But in the book I wrote, I did not advocate pulling hitting. I said, hit the ball hard through the middle. Don't try to pull. You only pull when you have the count or a type of pitcher that some pitchers look real nice to hit at, don't they? 
And the next pitcher, boy, you can't follow him. You got a great curve and a pretty sneaky fastball. And all of a sudden you say, boy, I hope I can make contact. First thing you think about, don't pull the ball. Hit him hard up through the middle. With two strikes, you think that. Tough situation, bad light, sun over here that's bothering you. A tough delivery. Wind blowing in, through the middle, through the middle. Yeah. I don't want to admit this, but it, I have had that happen. I didn't, I didn't order it, but it was put in the fat, so I used it. <laughs> Go ahead. What do you think is more important, fielding or hitting? Well, you want to be a good all-around player if you can do it. You want to be able to field and, and, and uphold your position to your, your, your benefit to the club rather than detriment, right? But hitting is the hardest thing to do. It's the thing that, uh, that uh, is the first requisite that anybody is looking for in a player. It would used to even be more important when I played. Now they got AstroTurf, which speed comes, comes to become a, it becomes a, a more important factor because the ball goes through the outfielders faster. Uh, uh, the infielders play back, got a better chance maybe to beat one out. Uh, but I would say that you want to be an all-around player. Learn your position. Learn how to help the club with your feeling. Uh, but you're probably going to have to spend more time in your hitting than anything else because it's the hardest thing, thing to do. OK, right there, buddy. I can't hear you. Should you, when you're, if you've seen somebody um, pitch before and you've studied them and, you want, and you're batting against them again, No, I don't know why you got to study it anymore. You've seen it. Your, your first inning, your lead-off batter. Well, if you've seen it, you've seen it. Uh, you might as well go after it if you've seen it. In other words, if a, I want to know where you got that hat. Is that an 1895 baseball cap or what is that? A fireman's hat or a painter's hat? What is that? No. Once you see a pitch, once you see a pitch, there's no use up to this time to look for anything else. Look for that pitch. Now you've seen it twice and it's a ball. You might as well still look for it. But if he throws another pitch, your reaction should be, how did that ball affect me? Did it really fool me, or did I see it pretty good? Now, if you saw it pretty good and you still could have hit it, but it was a ball, you say, I'm going to look for this guy's fastball because I can pick up his curveball, right? So that's the thing you got to do. Go ahead. You said that the uh, pitcher is uh, the stupidest person on the field, doesn't even catch a ball or pitch the ball. Yeah, but all the pitcher has to do is, that's all. <laughs> it just that, that's all. So, uh, uh, you're a pitcher? Are you a pitcher? All right. <laughs> All right. That's pretty good, though. That's pretty good. Now, there's a young fellow as a catcher, and he says, well, look, I'm trying to help out that pitcher. And that's all right. That's pretty good thinking. You're probably a pretty smart catcher. But certainly, the catcher has to help the pitcher. The catcher can see what's going on on home plate. You know, whether the batter is moving here or moving here. You know, to give them a little idea sometimes. Not enough hitters quite to do enough of that. But a good, smart catcher will see it. And I mean, you know, if he's moving up the plate, he'll say, well, I'm going to pitch you tight inside. You move far away from left. And he's going to break stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, a lot of times. A lot of times. Yeah. Okay. Never played on AstroTurf. Let's go. Back here. Who was the guy? Right there, buddy. Oh, yeah? Um, when I was playing baseball in spring, um, there was this righty batter who went like this and went all over the plate. Yeah? I didn't think that he should do it because if I threw a ball that was going to his head, it would, it might hurt. Well, that was pretty nice thinking on your part, but remember, <laughs> you're entitled to the home plate as much as he did. And uh, so he may be taking too many liberties on you by the very fact you say, well, I was afraid to get it over because I might hit him. But you're entitled to throw the ball over the plate. And if his head's there and no, and he's taking too much uh, liberty with you, why uh, then uh, he's got to, you know, suffer the consequences. Okay, go ahead, buddy. Tell me some good position for hitting because I'm doing 
I guess I'm not using all my power, you know. Yeah, probably you're not. You're a big, strong guy. Tell me, let me see your swing again. Come on up here. Now, this fellow here is a big guy, and he's older. it. Put 15? 16. 16, all right. Now, you stand right there at the home plate, and we'll just pretend, we'll just pretend that the pitcher is the guy in the plate. Now, you show me. Now, don't swing hard. We don't want you to lose the bat or anything. Just easy swing a couple times. Yeah. Do it again. Do it again. Swing a low ball again. Swing a low ball. All right, now. Just keep doing that. Just just keep doing that. I'm going to talk to these boys. All right. Now, show me all your action, your hips and everything. Now. All right, now. The first thing I want you to watch is keep swinging. Keep swinging just easy. The first thing I want you to watch is how little he really, in fact, cocks his hips. Doesn't hardly cock him, does he? Does he? No. I want you to get a little more rotation of your hips cocking. No, you're, I don't mean this way. I mean wind it a little bit and more like that. But look at that picture, just a little bit. Okay. Now, the next thing to look at, just keep swinging easy. All right, now you're starting to do it a little bit all of a sudden. Go ahead. Now, before, before we talked about what we just talked about, about him getting a little more hip action, his back foot wasn't turning like it is now. Now, don't sway so much from here to here. Stay right in here with your hip action and stay right there when you swing, you know? Okay. Yeah. All right, stay back a little bit more on your back foot, just a little bit more. Now, look. You're on your back foot to start with. Keep balance off. Spread out this little. Keep balance. Now, when you, when, you, when you stride, stride and keep balance right here. I don't want you to go that way when you're when you're doing that. I want you to stay balanced and sit right here and swing from there, right? Okay. All right, now watch this. All right, that's pretty good. Now, do it again. Just nice and easy. A little better. Now every pitch that's gonna be thrown at you is gonna be thrown there. So when you practice swinging, you wanna practice at different pitches, different pitches, different pitches, right? Look at the pitcher all the time. Still getting too much straightness on this leg. You're bending back. I don't want you. To, I don't want you to go from here to here. I want you to go from here to here. Not, no, you went too far forward that time. The more you go towards the pitcher, the less time you're going to have, isn't it? Yeah. You don't want to go out and reach the ball. You want to wait for the ball. Gives you more time, right? Now you're going, see, now watch the difference, boys. He's going from here to here. I go from here to here. See the difference? That's a little better. Move your hips as you hit the ball. Open your hips. Get a lot of hip action. Don't swing hard, just get a lot of hip action. A little more hip action. Try to throw your hips up and away. I'm going to left center, you're going to right center, right? A little better. Go ahead. Do it again. Now, there's one tell. There's one thing that you always want to know when you practice swinging. You swing and hold it this time. Swing and hold. No, a swing and just hold your position after you swing. Oh, okay. Hold it. I'd like to see you back here just a little bit more. Okay. And this foot always turn where you hit the ball. If you hit it to right left field. <laughs> Should be like that because you're turning it right. You hit it the right field, and you might be just a little bit more this way, right? So your back foot should be pointing roughly in the direction you hit the ball, right? You got a pretty good swing. Keep going. Practice swinging just like that. Practice swinging. Practice swinging. Practice swinging. Okay, another question, Ralph. Yeah, what do these kids consider on where to stand the batter's box? You know, away from the the distance, you know, from the plate, back, forward, or even, what should they think Well, about? I think the first thing that you got to consider when you go in the batter's box is you got to consider, can I reach the strike zone, right? I might, I've seen some, I've seen some pitchers that I had to stand, my regular position at the box might be like this, 
And I guarantee you, I'd have felt a lot more comfortable here against that delivery and that stuff and that wildness and everything. But you can't cover the plate. You've got to cover the plate. Now, you might vary it just a little bit. But as you move away, you've got to tuck in a little bit, too. But the main thing is, thank you. Thank you. The main thing is that you've got to cover the plate. Now, going back is all right, but your breaking balls could be a little more effective on you. But a guy might say, well, I'm a better low ball hitter, then you've got to leave him alone because it would make more pitches down to him. But I feel, most guys feel, they like the ball up rather than down. So if a guy told me that he's a low ball hitter, then I would say, well, okay, okay, I can't argue that. But I would rather be up on the plate where pitchers are got to be kind of up more because I'm right on the plate. Ball's got to be at least that high to be a strike, right? Okay, Kansas City. The what? Well, I can't tell you the one tough pitcher. I can name you some pitchers. Maybe a Bob Lemon, Hall of Fame. Bob Feller, Hall of Fame. Whitey Ford, Hall of Fame. Hal Newhauser, who might be there and could very well be there someday, a great pitcher. Now I'm going to name some pitchers you've never heard of. Um, um, well, uh, Bob Lemon was a Hall of Famer, but a tough pitcher for me. Um, uh, oh, there's a couple of guys I don't even... Ha, ha, Ken Chase was a tough pitcher for me. You never heard of him. Uh, Hoyt Wilhelm. Knuckleball pitcher. I, I couldn't hit him very well. Uh, of a guy named Mike Riba, who was a screwball pitcher. I had a hard time against him. Eddie Lopat, who will never make the Hall of Fame, but was a thorn. He threw a lot of herky-jerky stuff, and he was hard to pick up, and it seemed like the ball was heavy, and uh, that kind of stuff. So it's not, it's not always the great pitchers that might give a hitter the toughest problem. Uh, it could be a style, it could be a delivery, a pitch, you know? Now the first thing you think